Most of the advice around choosing the right job as a software engineer is pretty terrible. Let's talk about what that bad advice is, and I'll share my framework for making these really large career decisions. If it's not obvious already, choosing the right company is hugely important to find career success. An analogy I've heard is that choosing the right company is like picking the right bus. So imagine a highway where you have five or 10 buses on this 10 lane highway, and the goal is to get as far down the highway as possible. And so choosing a company is like picking a bus where you're starting at the back of the bus. And if you do really well in the company, you can get to the middle of the bus. Or if you get to like director or VP of the company, you're now at the head of the bus. So you're at the front of the bus and you're doing really well within that company. But if you zoom out, it turns out the much bigger factor in how far down the highway you get is what bus you ended up picking, not where you sit on the bus. So a very fast growing company, a very successful startup is going to take you much further down the road because the bus is moving much faster compared to a stagnant old company. And that's why it's really important to be thoughtful about which bus you end up sitting on. The company you pick has a huge impact on how quickly your career will grow. Let me start with two bad pieces of advice. First, I've heard that as you go through the interview process, the way to pick the company is to look at how much did you enjoy talking to the different people in the interview process. And so I've heard of cases where software engineers will tell me, I really enjoyed talking to that particular interviewer or that particular recruiter, and that makes me want to join that company. Or conversely, I really didn't get along with that interviewer, and that turned me off from the whole company. But if you take a step back and especially if you're talking about big tech, where you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of employees, what does one particular data point from an interviewer or a recruiter really tell you about the company? Not that much. Don't let one interaction, whether positive or negative, color your whole perception of the company. Keep in mind that as you go through the interview process, the company is clearly selling you something, right? So if a hiring manager is really impressive and says a lot of nice things about you, that doesn't actually mean that the company will be a great fit for you or your career. Or if you had a really negative interaction with the person who interviewed you, that also shouldn't be a red flag because interviews are inherently very high pressure and there's a really good chance that you'll never have to interact with that person ever again. Instead of looking at individual data points, a better way to evaluate a company's people is by looking at trend lines. If you're in school, look at where the smartest people in your class are or maybe the nicest people in your class are and figure out where they're going. And there's a really good chance that you're going to be happy going there as well. If you don't have a trusted set of friends or colleagues who you could talk to about the hot new company, you can also find an online community. For example, Taro. Taro is a company I'm building, jointaro.com, I'll leave a link in the description, where you can find really high quality discussion and feedback from top people in tech. For example, here's a question from an E5 at Meta asking about working through others as a weak point, and that's limiting their career growth at the company. So if you look at enough of these questions across a bunch of companies, you can start to get a really good idea of the culture and the priorities for different companies. And that can be really informative about what company you actually want to join. Another poor piece of advice is to spend a lot of time looking at financial statements from the company you're evaluating and trying to forecast what it might be. The tech industry is built on growth not by penny pinching your way to a profit. Especially if the company that you're considering is new or disruptive, it can be really hard or impossible to forecast with any amount of clarity what might happen to the company two or five years from now. The challenge is that these companies are expected to grow exponentially, and it's really hard to wrap our heads around what that actually means. For example, an 80% annual growth in revenue means that the company will have 10 times as much revenue four years from now as it does today. The math that we're used to, for example, in evaluating a small business or a restaurant totally gets thrown out when you're evaluating a company that's growing so rapidly. Figma actually made zero dollars in revenue for the first five years it was around, and then it went from zero to 200 million in annual revenue within four years. Even for more mature companies like Meta, Google, and Apple, their revenues have historically gone up 20% year over year which is pretty mind boggling that they can continue a geometric or exponential growth rate despite how big they are. The way I evaluate a job is to look at the importance of my role in the company and how it ladders up to what the company plans on doing in the next couple of years. The first question I ask is, how closely are you working on the core output of the company? For example, in a tech company, the core product is technology. So that makes it really obvious that the technology builder, the software engineer, is really critical to that mission. Contrast that with being a software engineer at a company like Nordstrom, which is this really old department store, and the technology function of Nordstrom got added in way beyond the founding of the company. It was never part of the core product that it's creating. At a company like Nordstrom, 
engineering will be a cost center rather than a profit center. And that means that you'll always be dealing with fewer growth opportunities and less investment. The giveaway here is if the company refers to the software engineers as the IT department. Being in the IT department means that the company is viewing the tech organization as operating in some silo, which is almost a necessary evil that's not really core to the product. The second question to ask is, how much decision-making power does your job function have within the company? For example, Apple is famous for being design-driven. It is a tech company, but at Apple, design is always the center of gravity in the whole company. Software engineers are there to then support and service the design and hardware divisions. This is important for the same reason we talked about before. Wherever the center of gravity for the company is, will receive the most investment and the most compensation. As a software engineer, you'll likely get paid less at Apple compared to a company like Meta, which is a pure software engineering company. It's also interesting that once a brand gets established, it's almost self-fulfilling in the sense that once Apple becomes known as a hub for the best designers in the world, that attracts more designers, and then that means there's more innovation at Apple, and that again attracts more designers. Similarly, for Google, they're known to be the best machine learning company in the world that attracts the best AI people to go work at Google, and that keeps Google at the forefront of innovation for machine learning. Another example here is being a consultant at a software agency. So obviously, if you're at a software consultancy firm, then being a software engineer is core to what the company does. But the decision making power is actually not with the individual contributor software engineer. Instead, it'll likely be with the client facing head or leader of the agency, or perhaps with the person, the client who's footing the bill. Because the software engineer is not the center of gravity for that software consultancy firm, there's probably not as much room for innovation compared to a big tech company. Choosing a job is a big decision, but I'd urge you not to over-index on the few people who you encountered during the interview process, and also don't spend too much time trying to model out the financials. Instead, think about how important is your job function in what the company is creating, and evaluate where does the decision-making power lie, the authority lie within the company. If you want more thoughtful discussion about how to navigate your software engineering career, or if you even want to get feedback on your particular situation, come and join Tara. JoinTara.com. We're bringing together top engineers and managers to have a really healthy and positive discussion that you can actually apply into your job. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.